Hi, in this video, we'll show you how to execute test complete tests directly inside Zephyr. There are several ways in which we can do this. The easiest is by setting up a suite automation job within the Vortex application. Vortex is often the preferred starting point for connecting automation with test management. It's easy to set up. There are a wide variety of jobs available to configure, and these jobs are configured using Zephyr's user, user interface. Uh, as opposed to leveraging uh, REST API. Before we get started, we just need to configure a Zbot. A Zbot is a secure agent that can be downloaded and installed anywhere where we're running the automation. Uh, we just need to give it a relevant name. We'd also need to make sure that we have the relevant prerequisites uh, enabled in the environment we're running our automation. Be sure to check this out before uh, configuring your agent. Uh, once you've done so, we can go ahead and configure the job. It's also worth pointing out that in order to run the Zbot, we can just uh, run the batch executable, or we can have the Zbot run as a service, perhaps at startup, etc. Now that the Zbot is running, we can click into the Vortex application. We have three different job types. We're going to look at Suite Automation. This job will allow us to execute a collection of test complete tests directly from uh, Zephyr. To configure the job, we just need to give the job a name, put in a description if we'd like. Underneath that, we can select our results parsers. We have a list of supported parsers here that are shipped by default, but you also have the option to add custom parsers um, to suit any tool you use going forward. We have a test complete bat file that'll be uh, configured where we invoke a script and the result of that execution will also be configured. In other words, our Zbot's going to run what we tell it to run here and it's going to parse the, the results data back to Zephyr based on the instructions that we've specified. Underneath the Zbot configuration we have cycle name. So this will be the planned and execution instance uh, within Zephyr. If we're looking at the test planning or test execution application, that's where we'll see the cycle name. We can reuse the cycle or create a new uh, test cycle for each test run with a timestamp. And we can also point to test cases. This is where we will update test cases each time we uh, run the test or we create new test cases uh, on the fly if the repository item doesn't have any test cases uh, using the same name of the test complete uh, test item. We can select a user, cycle start and end date, and once we are happy with that, we can go ahead and run the execution. All you need to do is click on the E button, and that's going to kick off our job. As we can see, Zephyr has kicked off our test complete automation tests. It's going to run what Zephyr is instructed and all of the results from the execution will be passed back to Zephyr. I'm running this locally on my machine but if I was running this on a virtual machine or on a remote machine wherever our automation is running this will be set up the very same way so uh, there's no limit on where we can set up our Zbots and our Vortex to execute. As we can see, test complete has completed the execution. We see one test passed, one test failed. Um, and when we close test complete, the Zbot will then finalize the job by posting the results back to Zephyr in real time. On the Zephyr front, the job has completed. We have our planning references within our test cycles. We have our test execution, highlighting what test failed, what test passed. And we can also raise defects directly from uh, Zephyr itself. So if we are using Zephyr for defect management or if we're using Jira, we can log our Jira tickets uh, directly in Zephyr for end-to-end -end traceability. Hope you find this video useful and thanks for watching.